Hi, my name is Thorsten Schmidt and in this video I want to give you a short introduction about the Cisco UBR7225. It's a really cool and small CMTS and let's get started. So, okay, here we have the device. Cisco UBR7225. Um, at the back of the CMTS um, we see the network processing engine. Um, if you want to use DOCSIS 3.0, then it has to be an NPE version G2. As you can see, the CMTS has three different gigabit interfaces. Um, then here we see that the serial cable we need to connect. So if you order a new CMTS and want to configure it, then you just get such a cable with it. And back to the processing engine, here we see some kind of uh, compact flash card where the operating system is hosted and below we see two redundant power supplies so that's it and on the other side of the cable modem termination system we have the ability to plug in two different line cards here is one line card inserted of version um, where can we see it it's called UBR MC88V and you can recognize it at the different color settings um, that it's a DOCSIS 3.0 card so the cable modem termination system has eight upstream channels and um, eight downstream channels so um, at every downstream there are one uh, physical downstreams um, hosted so that's the number of eight so okay that's the device itself now we want to jump through the basic configuration let's get started okay let's walk through the configuration for this purpose i have connected to our nms prime demo system and now i want to connect to our demo cmts and for this purpose i use ssh and I still have the password in the copy and paste and now we are connected to our cable modem termination system. Here you can see the host name of the CMTS and if you type in show running config, so you can shortcut it with show run, then you will see the configuration of our ready configured CMTS and now I want to jump through this configuration and give you some advices for this. Okay, um, first of all, this is just some uh, standard stuff, so we don't want to talk about it. Here we set the host name of the device. This is also uh, standard stuff, so nothing to worry about. Um, here we see that this is not quite cool configured because this is a uh, bad encrypted or a weak encrypted password. So, for example, you can Google this uh, host um, or this string and you can decrypt it in less than some milliseconds. So, um, better it would be if we type in, I guess, enable and then secret and then we type in the password and then we've got an MD5 encrypted password, I guess. So, this couldn't be uh, decrypted. So, um, this is not quite cool, but this is just for our play CMTS, it's okay. So here we've got some authentication um, stuff, but it's also not this important. It's just the banner and login stuff. So it's also mainly default, so nothing fancy. So the next section um, are some clogging advices. This is also stuff which I guess is mostly default and we don't want to talk about this now. Um, what is more interesting is the stuff that starts here. Here, for example, we enable the DOCSIS uh, load balancing and DOCSIS 3.0 load balancing stuff. So this is quite a cool feature. And for this purpose, here we see that we've just added two DOCSIS load balancing uh, groups. And this just means that the first a DOCSIS group, which is called 201 here, has um, the eight downstream channels of the CMTS included. 
and then the first um, three upstream channels and that we have a second DOCSIS load balancing group which is called 211 who has also the eight um, downstream channels and the last four so that's the next cable interface um, the last four upstream channels and what this makes is that if the channels are getting uh, full the CMTS can automatically arrange the cable modems so that um, the load is or, or the load is spread over the over the different channels so this is quite a useful configuration <coughs> if you are running it for production purpose and now we see another basic stuff so nothing we should talk about it this for example means that we enable ssh so this is also uh, quite cool and needs to be done during configuration and now that's it so here for example we've got the users who can log in and as i explained for the enable secret um here we use the the perfect way how you should write it so just username admin privilege level 15 is that the user can make everything and then we type in secret and after you type in the password and then it will be encrypted i guess it's md5 and that's the valid configuration. So now we come to the interesting part. Here we've got the integrated cable interface, which are the downstream channels of the CMTS. And here we can see that the CMTS has eight downstream channels. The first are the integrated cable two slash zero. And here we've got the channel one, channel two, channel three. And here we've got the frequencies. So for example, 306 megahertz on XR means Euro DOCSIS, so that the channel wide is eight megahertz. So if you are the US, you will use an XB and then you have uh, six megahertz, I guess, and the modulation type and the interleaving. And which is also quite cool for practical stuff is the RF power, which is the power which comes outside um, of the CMTS. And I guess this is in decibel milli voltage. So, okay, that's for the first four channels, then the second four channels. And now we come to the gigabit configuration. And as I showed you uh, at the hardware side here, we've got um, three different uh, gigabit interfaces. We also have got a fast Ethernet interface, but we don't use it. Um, and what you can see, for example, is that our CMTS is connected via gigabit Ethernet uh, zero slash two and we use uh, VLANs so here we've got point 100 which which means that this CMTS is connected via, uh, via a virtual LAN interface and here we've got these the IP address of the CMTS itself and the provisioning must be or must have an address in this segment um, and we use for example 10.255.0.1 for the provisioning system and that's it here we've got some ospf stuff but i don't want to jump into this and that's it for the configuration but the vlan isn't required so you can also write this kind of configuration in gigabit zero slash one and connect the first line card and then connect it to your provisioning server or to a switch which has access to the provisioning server so okay now we get to the cable card itself and here we configure the upstream channels and for example um, here we say we've got a bonding group which is uh, which means that uh, we can bond uh, four upstreams uh, for one bonding group uh, which means that the cable modem can bond four channels in the upstream um, at this bonding group uh, same as above for the load balancing group um, here we've got a shared secret, which is BPI encryption, but it's also not this important. And then here we see the cable upstream um, definitions. So for example, cable upstream zero means it's connected to connector zero. We've got a frequency, we've got a channel wide 6.4 megahertz, we've got a description. We are using ATDMA, which is time division multiple access, but uh, uh, advanced time division multiple access, and which is our recommend um, configuration, or maybe in, in switched mode, ATDMA minus TDMA, 
um, but you can read stuff about this. And here we've got the modulation profile. I'm not quite sure. 2 to 1 is a default profile. Uh, could be QAM64, and which is also a cool configuration which we don't use here is that you can specify uh, um, multiple modulation profiles um, in a row. And this would mean that if the signal to noise or the quality in the channel gets worse, then the CMTS can automatically switch to lower modulation profile. So I guess the configuration could look like uh, 223, then 222, and then 221. Uh, and this means that the CMTS can switch modulation profiles. So you can show the modulation profiles with the command show modulation profile, and then maybe just read about it, or we provide default config in NMS Prime. I want to jump into this later where this uh, should be default. Okay, so now we configure all the uh, upstream channels for the cable 2 slash 0. So the line card is connected not in the first slot, it's connected in the second slot, but that's okay. And now we've come to another important section, which are the wideband cable interfaces. And um, the wideband cable interfaces, it's important that you assign them to a special bundle. So for me, it's cable bundle 1. And this configuration just means um, that we have one wideband uh, cable interface, which means that all the eight channels, so don't worry about this this uh, asymmetric writing, uh, which makes me always a little bit nervous, but this just means that it, this is the controller zero and that's the controller uh, one, and we connect them uh, for, for one bonding group for downstream, so all eight channels can be bonded together to one pack for the cable modem. And this is just a recommendation from us that we add two separate bonding groups, one for the first four and one for the last four channels, because we have also modems which are not able to bond eight channels, they are just able to bond four channels. And for this purpose, um, I guess you need to specify um, these two bonding groups um, also. And yeah, that's it. So for this kind of writing, which is bandwidth percentage one remaining ratio 100, I guess that's a recommendation from Preddy Volp or John Downey. So maybe you can check out his channel. He makes also quite cool stuff and we just follow his recommendation. Could be also that it's from a blog from him. So, okay, so now we've configured the wideband channels and the next thing are the integrated cable interfaces and um, if you miss them you will not get any cable modem online <laughs> it's a it's a common mistake uh, if a cable modem is not getting online that you are missing the integrated cable interfaces or at least if you miss the cable bundle interface then i guess the modems will also not come online <laughs> so um, just for your information and what this means is that in DOCSIS 3.0 we have primary and secondary channels and a primary channel means uh, that the cable modem can register through a primary channel and the secondary channel is just for load balancing. Um, yeah, and that's it. And our configuration, or let's say in most of the networks, all channels are primary channels and that is just for backward compliance, which means because we are running also DOCSIS 2.0 modems, and the DOCSIS 2.0 can not go online on um, on a secondary channel. And uh, for this purpose, if we only have, for example, one uh, primary channel and seven secondary channels, then this would mean that all the DOCSIS uh, 2.0 modems uh, will be running just on one channel. And to avoid this, we um, assign every DOCSIS channel a primary channel, and this is not quite a big uh, deal. I guess um, if you only have a DOCSIS 3.0 modems, then maybe you can uh, think about another configuration, but most of the networks, that's not the part. So, okay, now we've got the same configuration for the cable interface 2.2 uh, slash 1, which is exactly the same as we talked about. Here we've got another uh, bonding group and the next uh, connectors. And then we've got the integrated cable, which are the primary downstream channels. Now we've come to the bundle interface section and the bundle interface is um, 
for configuration of the IP stuff and as you see it uh, above all uh, integrated cables and all cable interfaces itself are assigned to the bundle and this means that we can combine uh, many different cable interfaces to one bundle and have some kind of global uh, IP configuration for our um, RF devices. On a small CMTS like the UBR7225, it's not quite this important, but if you are running bigger CMTSs like the UBR10K, I will make another video about it, um, then of course that's quite important because you can just configure once a bundle interface and adapt it to every RF card, and then um, you have a global IP configuration for this purpose. And what we see here is just that we have uh, added some IP address ranges, and these IP address ranges are all stand for different stuff. So for example, for uh, cable modems, CPEs, and uh, maybe phone devices, or this will be an internal device. I'm not quite sure. Um, you can check it out if you if we run or if we take a look at the provisioning system, but not in this video. So, okay, um, that's it. And what is also a really important uh, line is the cable helper address. The cable helper address will specify what will happen when the cable modem gets online. And the cable modem, when it gets online, will forward all its stuff like DHCP and TFTP uh, configuration to the cable modem helper address. And this, of course, is our provisioning system. So now comes some fancy OSPF stuff. This is not required, so it's for dynamic routing, as I explained it shortly above. But that's cool for now. So here this line just means that we don't want to run a HTTP server. So the GUI from Cisco is just stone time. <laughs> um, here we've got an access list. The access list is for uh, SNMP, and we've just permit uh, our provisioning server. Um, I guess we've changed uh, the IP addresses during configuration sometimes. So here are two IP addresses, otherwise just one. Yeah, that's it. Then we have some uh, locking information, which means all the locking stuff will be sent to our provisioning system. And the provisioning system will record the logging with uh, just a normal syslog, um, Linux daemon. And yeah, that's it. And that's just uh, what, what kind of stuff should be locked. And um, for now, I guess um, it's quite most of the stuff. Here we've got uh, the SNMP communities. Also, if you're running the CMTS in production, of course, do not use public and private, just use some more strong elements. Yeah, here's also some fancy, uh, uh, some fancy lines. Uh, maybe you just need to Google about it. We just uh, use every time the same. So we provide default config uh, in NMS Prime. So if you don't know NMS Prime yet, it's a free and open source provisioning system, mainly for cable operators. And we provide default config for CMTSs. So maybe you can check out um, some of the videos. And I have still made a separate video, which I want to link down uh, in the comment section where I show you how to set up a freshly installed uh, CMTS and it's just far more easy than typing in all the stuff I explained here. You can just use a copy and uh, a paste command from, uh, from our system and then the configuration can be plugged in via TFTP and afterwards you can adapt it to your style so it's just far more easy then uh, then just typing in every command I explain here. So, okay, and this just means how um, the connection to the system works. And I guess these are some important lines because we say, okay, we enable SSH input and uh, yeah, that's it for now. And the last uh, or yeah, the last really important thing are the cable fiber nodes. The cable fiber nodes uh, mean or explain how uh, cable modems can be bonded. So this is quite important because if you m misconfigure it, then there will not be uh, working DOCSIS 3.0 as you expected. And this just means that we've connected, like I explained above, eight downstream channels with the first um, four upstream channels, and this is called fiber node 201. And then we want to connect the last four uh, upstream channels with all the eight downstream channels. So the configuration uh, must be synchronized uh, between the fiber nodes and the wideband interfaces and also the load balancing groups. 
Um, for this CMTS, it's quite simple. I guess this is quite a common configuration, which means you have two separate uh, segments or two separate clusters, and you just want to provide all eight downstreams for all the two clusters, and just four upstreams for one cluster and uh, four upstreams for the second cluster. And by splitting the upstreams, you will increase your signal to noise ratio um, because if one cluster gets down, gets critical thresholds or critical signal to noise ratios, then the other cluster will just work perfectly. That's the reason why we split this stuff. Um, last but not least, we have MTB configuration. I guess this is also um, important to notice because if your clock is running uh, outdated in the CMTS, what could happen is that the cable modem uh, get online, uh, get offline. I guess we've just uh, experienced some kind of these problems. So taking a look which system time your CMTS has is also um, something you should worry about. And the last thing that I want to show you, if you make everything correct and the provisioning server works well, you can type in show cable modem and then you will see the modems. We online means that they are wideband online. So these are DOCSIS 3.0 modems and um, modems without V minus are modems with DOCSIS 2 or less. Or modems which cannot bond channels, um, but if you configured everything well, then all the DOCSIS 3.0 modems should be online with we.online. So, okay, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Maybe check out our free and open source provisioning system, which is called NMS Prime. And uh, we have made a lot of videos about it on this channel. And there's also an installation documentation, which you can walk through by YouTube and see how you can set up the system. So for all guys who don't want to jump too much into the configuration of, of uh, CMTS or of the cable modems and all the stuff of the provisioning, DHCP stuff, NMS Prime is your solution. Just check out. And as I explained in the video, there's also, I guess it's called install seven uh, video. There I explain how you can set up the CMTS where I walk through uh, in this video. And um, this is just done by uh, copy and paste stuff. So nothing to worry about. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, then subscribe and we will see you in the next video. Bye. Yeah, hi, and one more comment. If you are interested in buying a CMTS, then maybe just get in contact with us. I will put in an email address in the video below and the prices for the, especially for the Cisco UBR on the refurbished market are drop it low. So it's quite a cool CMTS for DOCSIS 3.0. And if you want to order a well-tested CMTS, then just get in contact with us and we will see.